Hi everyone, it's Margaret Manning here. Welcome to 60 and Me. Thank you so much for being here today. I appreciate your, your presence and your company and I hope that you're going to enjoy the topic I'll, I'm going to discuss today. We, we choose something every day that uh, we think is going to be of interest to women over 60 and I've got a good one for you today. But first, my cup of tea. I'm drinking a really cool tea this morning. We have a blogger, Erin Young, who um, writes for us on different topics, including tea. She has a company called Evergreen Mind. Matcha.com, and she sent me a little sample of her uh, matcha green tea, and it is uh, really an incredible drink. Now I had had matcha tea before, but never quite like this. This is very pure, beautiful green tea, and um, it's made um, in Japan from the actual leaves of the uh, green tea. It's, it's ground up into a super fine powder. If I was to show it to you, it's very, very. Um, uh, vibrant color and uh, you know, beautiful uh, visually, but it tastes great. So I'm having a cup of um, evergreen matcha tea this morning in my green cup <laughs> to go with the tea. And it is, it's a really bright uh, green color, really tasty. So I hope you've got a cup of tea or coffee or something good to drink and enjoy because I'm going to share with you a story that I think will take you back a few years and hopefully bring back some good positive memories. Now, uh, were you a reader when you were a little girl? We have a blogger named Michelle Vosberg who wrote an article for us today on the power of, of reading classic children's books when we were younger, what they taught us, what we learned from children's books. And I really resonated with this. When I read it, I was um, going back to the day sitting on my porch as a little girl or in the, in the backyard reading under a tree really crazy reading. I used to read one book after another, but I just loved it. I love the places that they took me and the characters and the people. And I'm going to try to remind you of a few here that you might find interesting. Now, you know, books as we were younger were often stories about, um, you know, other people's adventures and told a story, like a moral, to try to teach a value, as, as we do with children's books. I mean, this is kind of how we, um, you know, we teach our grandchildren uh, about the values that we think are important. But also they were entertainment and they were escape and took us to places where we dreamed to go, but these other young kids in the books were there and they were living it. Uh, and we were you know, vicariously leading, living it through them. So she said, for example, she, her grandmother used to read her Heidi. And she said that Heidi taught her all about compassion. And that was just one thing that, uh, that Michelle says she learned from her, um, her storytelling with her grandmother. So what are some of the things that our children's books taught us? What are some of the things that we experienced? Well, first thing that Michelle talks about is independence. They taught us how to be independent. And, you know, the characters like Nancy Drew and the Bobsy Twins and some of those books were really all about uh, you know, doing things on your own, being resourceful, learning how to, you know, make do in tough situations. And, um, you know, I think it was Nancy Drew that was driving her little blue roadster. And she was probably, I don't know how old she was meant to be, but she wasn't driving age, but there she was. And it was that independence and freedom and that sense that, um, you know, we can do things on our own. She mentioned the box charge boxcar children and they lived in an abandoned boxcar you know in a, in a railway boxcar and goodness knows how they found money to work and and uh, you know feed themselves but it was all kind of about taking care of each other and and living an independent life children of Narnia all about conquering foes you know being strong and independent to manage it I remember actually it reminded me when I read uh, Michelle's story about my two sons when they were young, you know, maybe, oh, I don't know, six and ten. We used to uh, pretend when we, we'd go to get a video. Do you remember videos at Blockbuster? <laughs> we used to do that. And then for the weekend, and then we'd sit down and we'd say, guys, imagine that mommy was going away for the weekend and she left you a little note and it said, okay, guys, here's some videos and uh, 50 pounds or $50 each. Um, you can spend it on anything you like, but just, you know, try to stay healthy and, uh, you know, I'll, I'll, we'll check in on, on Monday. 
and they would get all excited. It was like, oh my gosh, what would happen if mommy went away for the weekend and left us with a whole stack of videos and, and some money for food? And they would go on, honestly, for hours describing what they were going to do and what they were going to buy. <laughs> and it was such a fun exercise. But books do that too. They take you to those places where it's like, gosh, if I was in that situation, what would I do? How would I manage? So first thing is independence. The second thing she talks about is what she calls pluck and grit. <laughs> How it will take you far. And she actually lists some books that I didn't even read, like Little House on the Prairie. I didn't read that. I know I probably should have. But uh, Tomboy Caddy Wood, uh, Woodlawn in The Yearling, and then there was Travis and Old uh, Yeller. They all were bold and courageous, and they stuck to their principles, and they got stuff done. So there was that whole sense of having grit and persistence that you learned in our childhood books. And they kind of inspired us, you know, to do good things and uh, to be strong and not give up. Did you find that? Am I reminding you of any books that you loved when you were little? Another thing that uh, Michelle talks about is that books uh, teach us how to be adventurous. I mean, think about Treasure Island, you know, The Hardy Boys, The Adventures of Tom Sawyer, all these books that we might have been asked to read or we read ourselves. And um, they're all about, you know, young kids going off on adventures. And, and, as, and as before, being resourceful and, and um, you know, just making, making life possible, <laughs> but also having just that desire to discover and explore. I think for me, that was one of the biggest things about my, my childhood books, is they took me to places that I just would love to go one day. And I guess I've managed to go to a few of them, which is, uh, which is I guess, part of the beauty of, of um, uh, just growing up <laughs> and being able to live your dreams. The Bobsy twins apparently visited Plymouth Rock and Charlotte and Charlotte Summers travel had this magical bed that she used to go to as a boarding school, I think she traveled to. And again, it, a lot of them, that's another point that um, these books help us to confront our fears and our anxieties and do something about it. It's really cool. Another thing that they teach us, and I think this is probably one of the most important things, is that you need friends. Yeah, you need friends in life to get things done. They help us uh, to get, um, you know, to go ahead with, with our ideas, and they help us to be strong and confident and know that they're by our sides. And I think that's a really, really cool uh, analogy. Now, the, um, it was Nancy Drew, I think, that had Bess and George as her best friends, and then there was Anne of Green Gables, had uh, her buddy Diana. And, you know, friends in books become our friends. And I don't know about you, but when I was young, I moved a lot when I was in my you know, early years, like just before teen, like from about eight until maybe 12 or 13. We moved every year. And I didn't have many friends. I kind of made my friends uh, through my books and also through my teachers and, and kids in school. I, I always tried my best to make new friends, but it, you know, it's hard. You click, kids are clicky and uh, it's hard to get into their little grooves, but uh, my books, have, were my friends and maybe that was the same with you another thing that Michelle talks about is that books uh, help us to stretch our imagination and think about George's marvelous medicine where he feeds that medicine to grandma and she gets really tall and well it's kind of a funny not so funny book but <laughs> um, Mrs. Pigglewiggle uh, had this upside down house and uh, you know you in Narnia like you step through the closet into this world of Narnia so books had uh, an imaginary fantasy element to them that took us places that we didn't, uh, you know, we didn't have access to ourselves. But they were dream worlds, they were fantasy worlds. And uh, Dorothy, of course, went off to Oz. But you know, I could go on and on, and in, in this article by Michelle, she really does touch on some great stories. I really encourage you to read it and uh, just, just enjoy it. It's a lot of fun um, down, trip down memory lane. And I guess the final, final thing that she talks about, which I think is actually maybe my principle for 60 and Me. In fact, now that I think about it, all these principles are, are true for 60 and Me. And this last one, though, is, is important, which is that kindness matters. You know, children's books bring it out in us that simple um, feeling of trust and kindness. That it's, that it's actually good to work, you know, to have a little bit of adventure and maybe have antagonists. That's a good story, you know, someone that's different than you. But at the end of the day, being kind and considerate is, um, is important. And we learn to love and care for animals too. I know a lot of women mentioned this in the article when it was published that uh, their books taught them about being kind to animals 
Lassie, of course, and uh, Bambi, all these little stories that made us bring out that tenderness in us and that kindness and that generosity. Anyway, I really could go on a lot, and, and, I, and I think I've covered only about a quarter of the books that I read when I was young, but maybe you've got some ideas now, of uh, stories that uh, you, you meant a lot to you and taught you something. So, thanks again for being here, everyone. I really would like to um, tell you how much I appreciate your, your support and being here. I do want to mention one thing at the end here that is important to me. If you do have the ability to help us um, on Patreon.com, we are trying very hard to keep 60 and Me, um, you know, a membership-free zone where we don't charge for, your, for, for the work we do. But, of course, we've mentioned before how expensive it can be and so by um, supporting patreon.com uh, you can help us a lot but that's just something I wanted to be sure to mention to you just so you know that you know we're we're just uh, we depend on you for for lots and and support is important so love to know more about your book adventures going back to that what books um, did you read in your childhood that shaped you Tell us about a book that you loved in your childhood that really shaped you in some way. Tell us how it shaped you. Look forward to reading your comments. Thanks again for being here. It means the world to me to know you're here by my side. And have a wonderful day, everybody. And we'll see you again very soon. Take good care. Bye-bye for now.